and welcome to stage three of uh, Breadcrumbs Hot Takes Live. Very excited to kick off the conversation with Camela. Camela or Camila? Camela. <clears throat> Excuse me, Camela. It's like Pamela. Camila. <laughs> Camila. Sorry, we have a very interesting topic. RevOps won't align your team. Something that I totally agree <laughs> and I'm noticing a lot of companies. So without wasting any more time since the session are only 10 minutes, I'll leave it to Camila. Feel free to share your screen and let's get started. And during the, the talk, whenever you want, just write in the comments box if you have any question. We we'll have five minutes at the end of the, uh, of the session to answer any question you might have. So Wonderful. there you go. The Thank stage is you. of your Camila. So, of course, I get logged out the minute I need to look at the slides, but I'm back in. So RevOps won't fix your alignment problem. Um, I'm uniquely equipped to handle this conversation because although I'm the VP of marketing for Caliber Mind now, I spent 15 years in the trenches, in other words, RevOps, in B2B tech companies before transitioning to marketing. So I have a long tenure in operations positions throughout the tech industry. So the reason why this topic is always top of mind for me is sitting in revenue operations, I grew frustrated with factors I could not overcome alone and that the business was not setting me up to overcome. So some of the key issues that operations people run into is being asked to change the behavior of others without positional authority. So if you think about it, a lot of organizations have RevOps structured. So there isn't a VP or somebody sitting in the executive room representing operations. They're rolling up to somebody who is not necessarily operationally minded or from an operations background. Um, I consistently reported to people who would prioritize other investments over operational efficiency or gaining um, ground in the analytics side, because let's be honest, even as a VP of marketing, I run into decisions all the time where I have to decide between an analytics platform or funding an event. And when you're under a lot of pressure to provide leads or pipeline or revenue, you're probably not going to opt to uh, back operations. Uh, I was also put in the middle a lot to use, used to point the finger to blame somebody for a bad quarter. And I had zero chance of an executive career path without moving into a functional group. So in short, operations, revenue operations is not equipped or being set up for success because companies are limiting the positional authority of the department as a whole. They typically in B2B in particular appoint a CRO who will put resources where they are most comfortable diagnosing issues and fixes. So instead of putting somebody who's neutral at the top of that revenue operations org, they're basically <laughs> citing someone who breaks the tie and will focus on the company or the department that they're most familiar with. Now, I know some CROs who are equipped to handle both sales and marketing. These unicorns are rare, though. Typically, people are focused on what they know best. So backing that up, since RevOps introductions, things aren't necessarily moving in a better direction. Only one in two companies say sales and marketing have a formal definition of a qualified lead. And that is such a basic, basic thing. Speaks to the misalignment between the departments. One third of B2B sales and marketing teams don't have a standing meeting to stay coordinated and aligned. And research shows that 90% of sales and marketing professionals believe their strategy, processes, content, and culture are not aligned. So let's talk through some missteps and then how I think RevOps could be structured to be more effective. So misstep one, number one is treating RevOps like sales ops 2.0. In a lot of organizations, I see the traditional silo to operations functions and then a revenue operations function on the side that houses analysts and commission specialists. And they're basically revenue BI for the company. Misstep number two is having that operations team with existing silos instead of splitting them out by functional group 
rolling up to a CRO who's biased either towards marketing or sales. The ideal SaaS RevOps org, and I know I'm not going to be popular because the thought of adding another person to the C-suite is never a popular suggestion, but I'm going to suggest it anyway. I also feel that in an ideal, and this is a fully scaled enterprise organization, the ideal organization has people structured by their specialties. So you have the systems experts sitting together because they touch end to end all of the systems. They need to stay in close coordination. When you have those people broken out into their silos, it doesn't work. You also need to give them room to specialize. One person cannot manage a CRM and a marketing automations platform. I've done both, but not at once. I haven't agreed to do them at once because it's just too much for a single individual. Then we also have insights, enablement, and operations. The intent of this is to cross-pollinate the teams with knowledge about other business units so they can make better decisions to keep the business coordinated as a whole. So in practice, though, I realize that end state probably isn't realistic for most companies. So what I suggest is you always have a strong operational leader at the helm of RevOps with that positional power. Let the RevOps leader plan budget and headcount for their team and hold them responsible for proving their impact. They should be able to tell you how much more revenue they've uncovered. They should be able to come up with a business plan. We're going to hold them to a, a high level so they earn that positional power. And then start planting the seed that business leaders and investors should advocate for different C-suite structure so that we have that operational person sitting at the table. So I spoke really, really fast. I'm going to stop sharing and we'll take questions. Or not. <laughs> I'm muted, of course. <laughs> there we go. That, that, that was really insightful, Camila. Thank you a lot. Mm -hmm. Let's see if there are any questions from the audience. Uh, in the meanwhile, I have a question for you. The two things I totally agree with you. I, I agree with most of them, but two that I experienced firsthand are the misalignment on lead scoring, on the definition of a qualified lead between sales and marketing. And the CRO, which is a fairly new role, always being like leaning toward either marketing or sales based uh, on their previous experience. So I was curious to ask you, what's the ideal process in your mind to, to have a good definition of a qualified lead? What's the process? Should it involve marketing and sales from the get-go or how would you structure it? So I think misalignment always stems from good intention in that um, a lot of times marketing is given a volume-based KPI, so number of leads. Sales is given a bookings number. These two things aren't always in alignment, and you can encourage the wrong behaviors on either side and that misalignment in the definition. So when you set goals at the top level like that, you're incentivizing marketing to go after volume and not care so much about the quality and conversion rates, if you give them both a pipeline and bookings goal, you're more likely to see better alignment between the teams. So a lot of this stems from how we're incentivizing the teams and how we're putting goal structure in place, not so much around the operations piece. It's really around getting the teams aligned on an individual goal. Uh, in the awesome. ideal structure, who has responsibility for forecasting revenue? Um, so that's a great question. I think I've heard a lot of leadership teams say that a sales leader who can't forecast is no use to them. So the sales leader is still going to be responsible for uh, kind of putting that litmus test on or the litmus directionality on the forecast because they know the sellers the best. They know who sandbags and who doesn't and, and all of those things. For budgeting, annual planning, and actually coming up with a uh, a more weighted forecast. I see that rolling up into revenue operations. Uh, so in the ideal structure I had, I did have an analyst team with dotted lines to the CFO. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, awesome. And then the, 
and then I think you had a second question in there about like the the bias between which team the CRO favors. So if we look at marketing and sales, the skill sets necessary for each of those teams are vastly different. So I just have a really hard time. I've only seen a CRO who could navigate both at the same time really gracefully two or three times. <laughs> and it's just human nature. It's human nature. Of course. And have you ever seen the ideal structure of RevOps that you proposed implemented in a company? Yes. Yes? Yeah. That's awesome. But probably that's still for a, lot, for a later stage company. It's a very sophisticated Actually, we're in under, I've seen it at sophisticated companies, but I also, we're under 50 people. We have a revenue ops oh, wow. organization. They roll into me right now because of my background and all the years that I spent in RevOps, but eventually we want a leader at the helm of that. So, Awesome. Let's see if we have any other question or otherwise we can move on and wait for the next session. I wouldn't have spoken so fast if I knew. <laughs> I was just trying to get through all the slides. <laughs> People are shy. <laughs> all right. Looks like we don't have any further questions. Camila, thank you so much. That was really insightful. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Bye. Bye.